Hello everyone and welcome back to What Not To Render, the show about the mistakes that are easy to make and easy to rectify. My name is James Coleman and I'm the Maxwell Render Mentor at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. And today I'm going to be talking about having a hole in your mesh. And for this example I'm using a scan of a head. This example is actually a wonderful example from 1024. I will of course leave a link in the description. And my thanks to 1024 for this wonderful example of a high res head. And the reason I'm using this head as an example is because it's got a hole in it. Like a lot of 3D scanned data, it's come included with a massive hole. 3D scanning is getting faster, it's getting cheaper, therefore it's getting more common by the day. So it's important to realise that sometimes you can't just use 3D scans in renders. They have to be treated carefully. And it's absolutely nothing to do with who scans the data, or the scanner used, or anything like that. It's the responsibility of who's rendering it to make sure that it looks good. Now first of all, this wouldn't be a problem if this render had an opaque material. In other words, if you didn't see the hole, or if the hole had no influence on the scene. However, in this case, I've applied a subsurface scattering material to this model to give it a bit of a more lifelike appearance. Obviously it's not very lifelike, this person is blue. And quite frankly, I would recommend that he goes to hospital if he came anywhere near me. But the reason I've made him a subsurface scattering material is so that it is a little bit more lifelike. And in the thin areas, it is more translucent than in other areas. And to prove it, I've got a camera of the nose. And here you can see in the thin areas of the nose, more light is coming through than in the thicker area of the nose. I'm going to go back to my overall view now. So as fire is just rendering up, I'll explain that you can see here in the top section of the head that the material looks quite nice and it's how you would expect it. In the thin areas, it's slightly lighter than in the thicker areas, because light is going in, it's scattering around, and it's coming back out again. But also, sometimes, it's going straight through. However, in the lower portion of this image, the material isn't behaving as we would expect it to. It doesn't look blue, it looks a sort of black color. And the reason is, if I go to my hole camera, that you can see there is a massive hole in the bottom of this mesh. And again, that's just something you would expect with a 3D scan and it's something that render artists and visualization artists have to cater for. Now to explain this effect, I've got to explain a little bit about the workings of Maxwell Render. All meshes in Maxwell Render are made out of polygons, and all polygons have what's called a normal direction. Polygons are infinitely thin, and one face will face the outside, and that's called the normal direction, but one face will face the inside, and that usually isn't seen by a camera, because the mesh will be fully closed. But in this case, where the mesh is not fully closed, there are polygons here with their normal direction outwards, as you would expect. But what we're seeing here is the inside of the polygon, or the inside face of a polygon, which is something you would never normally expect to see, and is something you should not see in a normal render. Now to work out what a material should look like, especially translucent and transparent materials, such as this triple S material, Maxwell Render looks at the normals to try and work out what the material should look like. And up here in this chin of the scan, light is behaving correctly because as the camera is looking up, it's looking at a polygon with an outside face, but also behind this polygon, it's looking at the inside face of a polygon on the other side of the mesh. In other words, it's behaving correctly and Maxwell Render knows what it should look like. So in the overall image, so in this portion of the image, Maxwell Render can see the outside face of the polygon, but it can't see an inside face behind it because there is nothing there. If the mesh was closed, there would be an inside face and Maxwell would know how the material should behave. But this simply isn't happening. The mesh needs to be closed in order for Maxwell Render to do its job properly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is today's lesson. Don't render a mesh, especially a translucent or transparent mesh, with a hole in it will get inaccurate results. That's what not to render, and I'll see you again soon.